So does that mean implants work 100% of the time, every time? Uh, not exactly. Even in healthy individuals, there's a slight risk for rejection. Uh, about 3 to 8% of people receiving dental implants have an implant fail. Also, smokers and diabetics can have up to a 20% or more chance of rejection. In fact, uncontrolled diabetes is an absolute contraindication to implant placement. In diabetic patients, glycemic control is a must. Otherwise, there may be problems with osseointegration and soft tissue healing, leading to the failure of the implant. That's true. Anyway, uh, let's look at your patient models and your panoramic x-ray. So, why did we need those exactly? Well, we need good diagnostic models and x-rays to determine if you have the proper oral anatomy and bone support to accept a dental implant. Since the dental implant will rest within the bone, it is essential that there is enough bone support around it. It is also important that the implant will not be placed too close to important anatomical structures such as the inferior alveolar nerve or the mental nerve in the lower jaw and the maxillary sinus in the upper jaw. Some patients may not have adequate bone levels due to extensive bone loss and may require additional surgery, such as a bone graft, to meet the anatomical requirements. Other patients may simply not qualify for a dental implant even if bone was added. When placing a dental implant, the surgeon will begin by creating a small pilot hole. It will then be enlarged incrementally until the implant can be placed. Oftentimes, a healing abutment, or cap, will be placed over the implant for protection to maximize healing before a restoration is made. Complete healing can take anywhere from three to six months. Wow, that's a lot of information. So the implant is just the thing that goes in my bone. What about the crown that goes on top? The prosthesis, such as a crown, is connected to the dental implant through the supporting abutment. Now, there are two categories of restorations placed on top of an implant. One is the single and multi-unit fixed prostheses, which you are interested in, and the other is the removable and hybrid prostheses, which are seen in implant-retained tissue-supported dentures. The removable prosthesis is designed in such a way that it can be removed for hygiene purposes, and the hybrid prosthesis can also be removed, but only by the dentist. All these parts are really impressive, but there has to be a downside to implants, right? Each restorative material used for the dental prosthesis has advantages and disadvantages. A gold restoration is not as aesthetic as a ceramic crown, but has better mechanical properties to last longer in the mouth. Porcelain and MCRs are more aesthetic, but also are more prone to fracture and can create excessive wear on opposing teeth. For the restoration retention, the crown can be cemented or screw retained. Cemented restorations are more aesthetic and less expensive, but less retrievable if the prosthesis fails. Also, if cement is displaced into the sulcus of the gum tissue and is not removed, inflammation can occur, which can ultimately lead to implant failure. For the screw-retained restoration, cement in the sulcus is not an issue, and the prosthesis is more retrievable due to the screw hole access. However, it is less aesthetic and can be more expensive. Well, you already take really great care of your teeth, which actually makes you a great candidate for receiving a dental implant. As long as you maintain those oral habits, then your implant has the potential to last you many, many years. There are many excellent recommendations on how to maintain your dental implant, and it is important that you follow your dentist or your dental student's instructions. After the placement of the dental implant, the patient should be seen every three to four months during that first year. After this, the patient should be seen at least every six months to monitor the integrity of that dental implant. It's also important to clean and floss around the implant to prevent diseases specific to implants. Failure to do so can result in inflammation, bone loss, and ultimately failure of the implant. Wow, this is a lot to process. I need to think about this for a minute. Okay, I definitely want the implant. All right, well then let's get started on that implant.